Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day and happy Friday. Hey, uh, have you ever watched someone make a mistake and then you learn from their mistake? Uh, I know I did because I have older brothers. And in fact, I have two older brothers and one younger brother, but uh, I grew up watching my older brothers and uh, when they did something that was kind of stupid, I made a mental note to try a different approach. So uh, my parents were disciplinarians. My dad was very strict and very firm and not a lot of fun uh, when, he, when we were younger. Uh, we, we taught him how to play as he got older. But, uh, but I watched my older brothers stand up to my dad and challenge his authority uh, nose to nose, you know, face to face, eye to eye. And then I watched my brothers painfully go flying across the room. And, uh, and I thought to myself, I'm going to take a different route, a different approach, because that looks too painful for me to uh, follow that. Right. So I didn't challenge my dad face to face. I'm not going to tell you how I challenged him, but that's another conversation. Well, in our passage today in Mark 12, uh, the Pharisees come to Jesus and they try to trap Jesus into either being anti-Rome or pro-Rome, either one, they didn't care. They wanted to accuse him of being a, a rebel against Rome and have the Romans destroy him, or they wanted to be able to accuse him in front of the crowds of being pro-Roman and therefore a traitor to Israel. And they thought they had the perfect question, and it was about paying taxes. And, and of course, they failed, and we get to learn from it. So listen to this account in uh, Mark chapter 12, beginning in verse 13. It says, and they, the religious leaders, sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap Jesus in his talk. And they came and said to him, teacher, we know that you are true and do not care about anyone's opinion. For you are not swayed by appearances, but truly teach the way of God. They're buttering him up. Can you, can you tell that? They said, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But Jesus, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, Why put me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. Bring me a coin of the realm and let me look at it. And then he said, they brought one to him, and he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is on this? Uh, they said to him, Caesar's. And that's when Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Um, they tried to trap Jesus, they failed, and we get to learn. And the truth is, render unto Caesar, render unto the government the things that belong to the government. Uh, and, and by the way, what are the things that belong to them? Uh, taxes, that's part of uh, what we have to live with. And, and uh, you might pray for an administration that lowers taxes, and, but it doesn't matter if the administration raises them, we still have to pay them. Uh, military service, you know, they had a draft for a long time, and if there's a major war, they might have it again. But you owe that to the, the government to, to serve in some capacity. Uh, you owe it to them to obey the laws. Whether you agree with the laws or not, they're still the laws. And, and if you disobey the laws, you're going to suffer the consequences for that. You owe it to the government to be a good citizen. Uh, you know, to help your neighbor and to make your community a better place. Those are the things that you owe to Caesar. But the real thing is, notice that he said, not just render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar, but render unto God the things that belong to God. So what is it that we owe to God? We owe to God our utter devotion, completely, that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength with our whole selves. We owe that to God. That's what we need to render unto him. We, we owe to God obedience to his commands. In fact, that takes place the precedent over the laws of the land so if the government passes laws that are contrary to the laws of scripture we have to obey God not men the apostles demonstrated that in uh, the book of Acts when they said to the Sanhedrin the rulers uh, you decide for yourselves whether we must obey you or God but we're going to obey God and, and so we have to obey God uh, that's that's what takes precedent in our lives. We owe that to God. Uh, we ought to render unto God willing and joyful service. Willing and joyful service. We've got to give God our time, our talents, our gifts, our energy, our resources. Say, God, you saved me. I'm giving my life back to you in service to you out of gratitude. We owe to God our worship, our praise, and our gratitude for who he is, for what he's done, for how he's saved us, for how he's blessed us because Jesus is the one who's worthy of all those things. So render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And you might do that grudgingly, it doesn't matter, because you still owe them to him.
but render unto Jesus the things that are God's. Surrender to him joyfully, thankfully, and with enthusiasm, because he is always good, and he's always going to bless. And speaking of blessings, I'm praying that you have a blessed day, Calvary.